Hi viewers, so in the previous lecture we were looking at what do we really mean by the word face and we had looked at a example where in a particular alloy there were two phases. We specifically looked at a lead and copper alloy. So moving ahead, uh, before we start off with the formal definition of a phase diagram, I would like to drive home the point or the key difference which we will see in alloys compared to pure metals. So the key difference is when it comes to a pure metal, there is a definite melting point or a boiling point. So when we talk about solidification, when then what happens is when you bring down the temperature, say for example water, so you are bringing the temperature down, solidification will take place at a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. Temperature won't vary while this process of solidification proceeds. So all the while this temperature will be at 0 degrees Celsius itself. So I can show you the same in a plot or in a figure. As shown here, let's say I'm bringing the temperature like this, bringing down the temperature like this, then solidification will happen along this particular regime where the temperature stays constant. In this particular regime, latent heat of solidification is given out. Then when solidification is completed, then temperature further comes down. So this is how it happens in a pure metal. Now when it comes to alloys, in alloys they don't have a very specific value for the melting point or the boiling point. What happens is when you solidify a particular alloy from liquid stage to solid state, the solidification process happens over a range of temperature unlike to what we have what we just saw in the case of a pure metal or a pure material like what so again let me show you the same with the help of a figure as you can see here when i am bringing down the temperature of my particular alloy let's say this is a steel alloy then there is a particular line called liquidus. So once our cooling line will encounter this point, then the process of solidification begins. It continues. So this particular regime or this particular region in the curve represents the process of solidification. It progresses, it takes a while. But it is interesting to note that here temperature no longer remains as a constant value. It keeps changing, in fact it comes down. As it comes down, when this cooling curve, this is the cooling curve I am. So when this particular cooling curve meets the solidus line, at this particular point there won't be or I would put it rather in this way that once this cooling curve encounter this point the process of solidification will be completed then naturally the question arises what so above the liquidus the state is completely liquid below the solidus the state is completely solid. So in between, what is the state of this particular alloy? The answer to this question, since we are dealing with phase diagrams, there will be two phases existing in the alloy during this regime. So this is a bit of introduction or a key thing which we should keep in mind when we talk about phase diagrams of alloys. 
So having seen the very key difference between a pure metal and an alloy, now move to the very formal definition of a phase diagram. This definition, usually I am not a person who goes by definition, but I felt, feel this particular de definition of the phase diagram carries a lot of message. So it will be good if you know this definition well before or well before we start explaining more about phase diagrams. So phase diagram called equilibrium or constitutional diagram. So let me first explain what why it is called equilibrium or constitutional diagram. See, in a phase diagram, you will see different phases and all of these states will be equilibrium states. Moreover, all these curves will be generated after a very slow cooling process. So if I can bring in an analogy from thermodynamics, this can be thought of as a quasi-static process or a completely ideal thermodynamic process. Okay. So, in a phase diagram, you will only come across with equilibrium states. Now comes the very important portion in this definition. It shows the relationships among temperature, composition and phase. Three things, temperature, composition and phase. Or in other words, if I know the composition of a particular alloy and if I know the temperature, then I can predict well in advance what will be the phase present in that particular alloy. So in that way, phase diagrams will help us. In the introductory lecture, I already explained how phase diagrams will act as a precursor in designing a heat treatment process so as to achieve desirable mechanical properties at the end of that particular heat treatment process. So keep these three things in mind. It gives us the relationship among temperature, composition and phase. In the next lectures, we will look into a few examples of phase diagrams like maybe a nickel copper 